Yes, Rajiv. We are uh, live now on Facebook. <coughs> भद्रंकर्णे विष्णुयाम देवा भद्रं पश्चिमाक्षवीर्ययत्रा सिरोइरंगे स्तुष्टुपां शस्तनु वीरवशेमा देवाहितं यदायु नमस्कार Good evening. Welcome to the book launch of a Bengali lady in England <clears throat> of Krishna Bhavani Das, translated in English by Nobunita Shengupto, Englande Bongo Mohila, from the book Englande Bongo Mohila, from our KTF Kolkata Translators Forum. I welcome all of you and all of our viewers to uh, this evening's program. At the very beginning, I request our working president, Shamul Bhattacharjo, creative writer and translator, and Sahitya Academy winner, <coughs> to give our introductory notes on today's program. Shamul Dhar. please uh, thank you joya good evening to all in the new normal uh, webinars and uh, e launches and online classes have become the norm so kolkata translators forum we uh, also uh, taking it we call it as ktf in short we are also going for it since last uh, few, four months though we uh, miss the physical presence of friends and dear ones online events also give us the wings to cross barriers of distance we could uh, call speakers from europe america latin america and asian countries like as uh, iran sri lanka bangladesh in our previous webin webinars kolkata translators forum has been founded by renowned and experienced translators it aims to translate among different indian and foreign languages professionally to organize the translators and eventually form a translation academy it believes in the worldwide fraternity of languages and in the power of resist uh, power to resist hegemony of all kinds in order to move towards a more rational and borderless society ktf deals with indian languages like bengali hindi urdu sanskrit punjabi dogri malayalam rajasthani odia assamese and also foreign languages like spanish greek german russian and of course english both literary such as uh, poetry prose drama or other uh, genres uh, and non literary works like audio visual subtitles advertising copies product manuals voice overs etc translated with utmost proficiency by members with expertise in various niche areas if you some of it uh it is the go to place for all kinds of translation jobs in indian and foreign languages by concerned experts by today's webinar ktf has started launching book books translated by its members and the mentors the first one is in the series is by our assistant secretary dr navanita sen gupta the entire webinar is been anchored by distinguished spanish uh, teacher and translator joya choudhury she is uh, also a bengali poet and uh, recently written a novel now let us uh, see what is there in the book to be uh, released today it is a translation of a travelogue by a bengali lady in the 1880s a 20 year old bengali woman named krishna bhamini das accompanied her husband to london intending to observe and uh, uh, document the lives of uh, british the colonials Huh. of india and such uh, and study the cultural differences between the indians and the britishers her observations were published as a travelog titled england de banga uh, bongo mohila in 1885 which was subsequently banned by the british government because it its content was 
uh, deemed dangerous by the authorities in in a recent english translation of uh, uh, krishna bhavani das book a bengali lady in england by author and acad- academician uh, dr navnita sengupta you get a glimpse of 19th century london in all its flawed glory glory now uh, it is uh, our secretary i think will come and sp- welcome you uh, over to joya thank you shamoda for uh, telling us a brief note about our forum uh, trishna bosha uh, i think um, he is one of the most uh, important writers of modern bengali literature i welcome our secretary kolkata translators forum trishna bosha to deliver her welcome note of the book launch of navnita shengupta krishna thank you jaya i take a great pride in welcoming all the uh, dignitaries and speakers of this evening this is a very uh, important uh, book uh, we are celebrating the book launch of uh, navonita's uh, a bengali lady in england which is translation of krishna bhavani dash's englande bongo mohila which was published in 1885 krishna bhavani das uh, was born in 1862 uh, she was just one year younger than our great poet rabindranath tagore and um, it's very significant that this year is also her 100th birth anniversary as uh, krishna bhavani died in 1999 so it's very uh, significant that this year uh, navonita has translated this book and it has been published by um, hawa call publishers uh, i uh, remember when i was uh, working on my uh, non fiction nario projukti i uh, read this book in bengali and i was very surprised to note that uh, krishna bhavani was so advanced for her age she um, she was uh, really surprised and very happy to see the women's position in england but she also understood the um, understood the profit oriented uh, uh, make uh, mindset of uh, british uh, just i want to uh, read out a passage from the uh, original book so that you can understand how krishna bhavani understood the mindset of british chotur ingrejera she desher byaborito drobbo sokoler namuna anaiya ekhane obikol shei guli prostut koriya bharatborshe pathay jodio ei sokol koler dara nirmito drobbo amader desher hate toiri kapor shal o onnanno shilpojato samogrike porasto korite pare nai তথাপি ইহারা কলে ওইগুলি এত সস্তায় প্রস্তুত করে যে দরিদ্র ভারতবাসীরা ক্রমে দেশীয় বস্ত্র ছাড়িয়া একেবারে বিলাতি কাপড় ধরিয়াছে assistant secretary of our kolkata translators program navanita shengupta and it has been published i welcome uh, professor joydeep sarangi professor malashri lal professor shongjukta shengupta sorry shongjukta dasgupta professor somdatta mondol and uh, our publishers uh, from hawa call kirti shengupta and uh, bitan chakraborty to this evening i also welcome our working president shamol bhattacharjo our president rawal push navanita shengupta uh, the um, translator and our assistant secretary and joya choudhury who will uh, who is anchor of this evening and i also um, welcome other guests and audience who are happy to observe this evening thank you all over to joya thank you trishna <clears throat> uh, really it's a privilege for me uh, to uh, be, to participate in this program uh, 
since I didn't uh, read the Bengali version of Krishna Vamini Devi, um, when I read uh, the translation of Navanita's book. I think, well, our guest will uh, say us in detail. Um, but when I discover that um, she, uh, when I started the book, I thought that you know, the approach was the starting uh, of the book was very novice, you know, a very naive uh, Hindu uh, married woman was traveling to an European country at that time in 1885. Uh, our National uh, Congress Party was um, formed. So it was, uh, so it was dawn of our uh, our movement, freedom movements, uh, uh, dawn of our movement of freedom, uh, sorry, freedom movement in India. So at that time, people was very much, I mean, who were, who is of a higher class, at least uh, could travel to foreign countries. Um, at that time, uh, this lady, um, what should be uh, that very much, um, uh, very much supportive to the rulers, uh, Krishna Bhavani Devi was way far away, different from, uh, from, uh, for, from my expectation. Uh, she reached England and I could see the metamorphosis of the writer throughout this book. And yes, to the readers, I think it is not a mere travelogue. It was a clear, it's a depict, it's a clear depiction of that time society. And what she uh, wrote in this book, I think today at 2020 also, we can see and compare the her, uh, her uh, look at the uh, nation, British nation, and we, the Indian people, she just very impartial. She just has written the book very impartially. And I think the translation of Navanita is wonderful. Uh, but in detail, of course, we'll see later in the evening from our guest speakers. Uh, but <clears throat> beforehand, I should tell about our translator, uh, the translator of this book, a Bengali lady in England, uh, Navanita Shengupto. Nobunita is assistant professor of English at Shoshuna College. Her areas of interest are 19th century literature, gender studies and translation studies. And she, as you know, she's the joint secretary of our Kolkata Translators Forum. And of course, member of IPPL Intercultural Poetry and Performance Library, Kolkata. I welcome, I request Nobunita kindly read something from your book, kindly say something about your experience while translating this book. Over to Navunita, please. Thank you, Jayadi. Uh, a very good evening to everyone and a uh, huge thanks to my end for being here, uh, for being present in this evening. And it's actually a privilege and honor for me to be able to launch uh, this book here and I heartily thank Kolkata Translators Forum for providing me with the space. Uh, all first things are special and so is uh, this book launch. It's been the first one for me but uh, this has been made more special because of the panelists uh, here. Uh, Professor Shantrita Bashkutu and Professor Mala Shulal, both of them have been my teachers and I've been privileged to attend their classes as uh, postgraduate and MPhil students. And it's wonderful to have them here this evening. Professor Shondata Mondol has also been a very important person in my academic career, though I have not been fortunate enough to meet her in the physical space. But uh, I have been reading her work on women's uh, travel writing, her translation, particularly the Poshtimi Yudha Triki, the Westward Traveler, which all these together form the background reading of my PhD uh, dissertation, which ultimately took uh, the shape of this book today. And I've been greatly enriched by her work. It's, uh, and the entire panel is being moderated by Dr. Jaldi Charungi, who has been another very inspirational uh, person while working with him on uh, 
various programs for intercultural uh, poetry and performance library. I've learned a lot from Jardibba, and uh, in both in terms of academics and in terms of uh, organization. So I'm really, really thankful to have uh, these people, these august guests uh, this evening here today. The one person I'm really missing is Professor Professor Joanna Shannon, who had been my PhD guide, and she had been a uh, real support throughout the journey, right from the dissertation to the publication of the book. And uh, it's unfortunate that she could not be here with us this evening due to some other problems. And I'm also happy that uh, Kiritiba and uh, Bikan of Kamruvi is here. And I must mention that it's a lot of hard work on the publisher's part has gone to bringing out this book. And uh, I being a novice in terms of publication, uh, have been literally like guided by Kiriti Shengupta and Bipan Chakraborty, who's a fabulous cover designer, has designed the cover for this book. And uh, the cover had been has also been widely appreciated. So a huge thanks to both of them as well. My journey with Krishna Bhavini actually starts uh, a number of years back, I have been uh, writing, I, I did my MPhil on Europe Prabhashi Kotro, which is a, a selected translation of Rabindranath's letters. And that is how I came across the 19th century travel writing. And uh, 19th century, and from there, my interest got uh, caught up by the women's writing of that, uh, of that time. And I was uh, engrossed in reading up more and more uh, writings by women. And that's how I came across this uh, wonderful book by Krishna Bhavini Dash. And uh, the moment uh, I read the book, that, that was the moment I fell in love with this woman. Because this woman, if we look at the book, she's extremely bold. She has a mind which is sharp and critical uh, compared to most of the people, most of her uh, peers. And uh, the point is that she belongs to a very orthodox Hindu family. So coming from such a background, if a woman can speak in such a bold language as she does in uh, in uh, England in Bangladesh or a Bengali lady in England, I felt that this work should be translated, should be made available to a larger audience and I'm happy that Calcutta University from that point of time had started allowing translation as PhD projects which is why I could uh, take this project up. Now uh, I have been asked to read uh, some portions from this book so I'll not talk about the book much but what I'm going to do is I'm going to read two passages from the book just to show how diverse her interests were, because in 19th century, or even now, women are not considered to be uh, interested enough in politics and economics. And that, that seems, at least in 19th century, that seems to be the general uh, trend. But this is, there here is a woman who breaks through all such preconceived notions and uh, comes up with a writing which is extremely remarkable from the perspective from the uh, background that she is coming from the passage the first paragraph that i'm going to read is from a chapter which she titles as the british colon an independent race their government and election of the members of the parliament and she has given a very detailed description of the parliament and after that i'm reading the part after uh, the description of the parliament is over and I'm reading. The British are divided into two main political wings. One faction is known as the liberals, that is progressive, and the other is called the conservatives, that is orthodox. The liberals want to bring in a number of progressive reforms in the government and look forward to an overall development free from all orthodoxies. They publicly declare peace economic restraint and development to be their primary aim. They love to live in harmony with other races and take into account their merits and demerits as they would do in their own case. They share happiness or sorrow of people 
belonging to different races. But the conservatives want to preserve the present system of government the way it is. They are quite reluctant to bring in any development or change and are only concerned about the prosperity and well-being of their own country over that of the others. There's another short passage that I uh, just want to read uh, and where, which is from the uh, chapter, The Hardworking British Craftsmen Trade Workers. And uh, she's saying, I'm not going to read the whole of the paragraph. I'll just read a few lines. Of course, the owners of these factories in England are almost like emperors. Like monarchs, they have immense wealth, various ambitions, huge enterprises, threat and apprehension, as well as pride and conceit. They too send their ambassadors and representatives to different parts of the world, keep a track of the condition and needs of the people living in the nearby or far off countries. They rule over the working class and take into account their conditions. If they so wish, they can help a large number of people. In short, they are the masters controlling human labor. So we talk of the economic colonialism today, we talk of the capitalism, and I think Krishna Mahavani talks of all these in, uh, Krishna Mahavani is talking of all these things in her book, though she's not aware of the terms of the, of the uh, terms that we use now today. But even in spite of being unaware, she is uh, she is aware enough to bring them into focus, to bring the issues into focus. Thank you so much. Um, uh, over to Jai. Thank you, Navanita. Really, I it, it reminds me the pleasure of um, reading of this book because I recently read this one. It is wonderful. But now I think people are, have become very, very interested to see the cover of the book. So uh, let us, uh, uh, let us um, launch our book. Uh, for that, I invite uh, our distinguished guests, guest speakers, publishers and all um, to launch uh, this book. Uh, a Bengali lady in England. <clears throat> I request Mr. Joydeep Sharungi. Uh, uh, I request our uh, guest speakers, Professor Shongjukta Dashgupta, Professor Shomdatta Mondol, Professor Manushri Lal, and of course, the publishers of Shamhobi Hawakol, Kiriti Shengupta and Bitan Chakravarti, and all of us, uh, Shamulda, our secretary, and Rahul Pushji, Trishna, and whoever, everyone, uh, please launch the book. I have my copy also with me. So I request you all, please show the book on camera. So, and we wish all the success of this book. I sincerely hope the success of the book uh, so that um, this book is, you know, quite, quite interesting and it's uh, the making of this book also very interesting but i request you all please show the book on camera let us launch please i request you all i mean shomdatta all i request all of you please show the book little up towards the camera all of you kindly nobonita if you have your own copy please show and aplaudo, vamos a brindar. Uh, since a uh, Spanish translator, I used to practice Spanish all the time. In fact, I forgot my mother tongue. I don't know Spanish. I don't know English. I don't know how to conduct the program. But still, brindamos. Uh, let cheers for uh, the, the success of this book. Hola. Yeah, Hola. <laughs> Hola. Hey, on a connection with you. Vishon Shuvecha, Hattali Ojak. Thank you. Uh, 
just now we have uh, uh, the book of uh, the Navanita Shengupta, the translated book of Navanita Shengupta. Originally, it was written by Krishna Bhavini Devi. Mm. I request. Uh, I mean, I move to the later part of uh, the program of this evening. Uh, first of all, I request uh, the moderator of this part, Mr. Joydeep Sharongi. Uh, Joydeep Sharongi is a principal of New Alipur College. Uh, Vice President IPPL uh, is engaged with poetry movement for social change. He has eight collections of poems in English, the latest being Heart Training the Light. I welcome you, Joydeep, uh, kindly, and I welcome all our guest speakers, Professor Malashri Lal, Professor Shangdukta Dasgupta, Professor Shamdatta Mondal, to join in the conversation about, uh, we, we are very eager to hear uh, your views on this book, on the translations, uh, translation of Nobunita and all. Thank you, please. Take the mic, Jayadeep. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you, uh, Navonita. Congratulations. Congratulations uh, for this very important translation, which will add values to literary studies uh, to, in India and also beyond India. And uh, thank you, Kolkata Translators Forum, for organizing it. The publisher, Hawakal, Anchor, Jaya Madam, uh, who is very reputed for her translations from Spanish uh, into N people. We all look forward to more contribution to Bangla and uh, Spanish and English uh, translations in between. We have very prominent and very important three panelists today who don't need any introduction. And uh, I'm speechless and I am word, I can't express in words to introduce my three icons and mentors in, for this evening. We are very fortunate that we have with us Professor Malu Srilal, retired professor from the University of Delhi and very from administrative as well as from academic position. And she is a member for the English Advisory Board for Shahidta Academy and many prestigious uh, or places and committees. Her specialization is literature for human gender studies and many other areas. Nowadays, she is working on Sita, Radha, and many mythological characters and creating new space for studies and scholarships. Let me mention two very important books that uh, demand mentioning in very well. Uh, number one, in, in Search of Sita, Revisiting Mythology. And another word, mythology, Tagore, and uh, feminine, uh, our journey through translations, that is very important. And of course, our latest work with uh, Nomita Gokhale, Betrayed by Hope, a play on the life of Michael Madhusudan Bhatt. I think these are very signal contributions in 2021 and the series. And uh, over to Malasruti on the book, because we are already, uh, we can't wait. We can't uh, actually uh, wait for more. Over to Malasruti, please. Thank you, Jordi, for that very generous introduction. And thank you to the Kolkata Translators Forum and all the office bearers for inviting me to speak this evening. My congratulations to Nagunita for an outstanding translation not only because the book is important, but because in English, it reads absolutely smoothly and beautifully. So I have a few points to make about the book, which strike me as significant. And uh, Joydeep said I could take about 10 minutes. Joydeep, you can always cut me short if we are running out of time. So first I want to actually take forward a point that was made by Joya that uh, the book defies our ideas of what 19th century women could write about. This is not a book that is focused on domesticity and uh, issues of the household and the kitchen. In fact, I found it fascinating that it was not only leaping that boundary, but it was a multi-genre text. 
And I thought I'd give you one of the poems that she wrote, which came as a bit of a surprise to me. Very rousing four lines, and here they are. Come, sisters, let's break out of prisons or counsel our dear brothers to untie the fetters that bind the Bengali women's feet. Now, it takes a lot of gumption to say that in 1885. So the first thing to note is that the book has immense archival value. And Krishna Bhavini traveled, yes, as many other women did who were privileged from affluent homes. But she was the only one who wrote the travelogue. We are aware of Torudat and Orudat and their travels, their poetry. We know about Gyanoda Nondini, Tagore. But they didn't write travelogues. So what makes Krishna Bhavini rather unique is that uh, she talks about the day-to-day -day impressions that she has of the English people and of the experiences that she was having. It came as a surprise to me, therefore, that the English banned the book, and I asked Nobunita this over our email conversations. Why did the government feel so threatened? Didn't seem to me that there was so much uh, rebellious stuff in the book at all. It was a critical observation, but not something that was demolishing the government in any obvious way. The second point that I want to make is that the book is full of very valuable comparative statements. And again, this is a cultural study of the contrast between the people of England and Bengal. And uh, frankly, there are other people who have done the same. As Joydeep mentioned, Namita Gokhale and I have just last week published our book on Michael Modushudan that with some preparatorial essays. And you know the material. He had a lot to say about the comparison between England and Bengal. Then, of course, we are very well aware of Ramindranath's comparisons of England and uh, Bengal, and particularly in relation to the women. So what is Krishna Bhavini saying that is new? I think it's extremely important to note that she emphasizes so-called non-domestic details. She talks about the duty and discipline that make the British people the characteristically efficient people that they are. And then she compares the lives of the women in both the countries. And she takes some uh, undue interest, I think, in Queen Victoria's wardrobe. Now, uh, she's interested in the household affairs of the royalty. Why did the servant John Brown lose his position? She can't keep her eyes away from the Oxford Street shops and the Strand Road shops. But nevertheless, her detailed eye takes her to a very interesting detail, and that is Kensington Garden, where she notices in a corner the carved statue of a veiled Indian woman sitting on an elephant. Now, this macro vision and the micro vision I find in the book is most arresting in those comparative statements. I come now to my third point. Is it a feminist text? This is something I ask of every book that I read. So pardon me for bringing it up again. And it's a feminist te text before that word came into currency, before it held a special kind of a meaning. I think for some reasons, we need to look at it closely. For instance, she makes a comparison between the romantic love and the conjugal life. She talks about the possibility of British women having the freedom to choose their life partner and Bengali women being denied that kind of a freedom. She also look at the, looks at the opportunity that the British women have of working outside their home in newspaper offices, in shops. They can become educated to be authors, scholars, scientists. She herself didn't receive much education, and yet she writes beautifully. She also looks at all the artificial clothing, the accessories that go into the women's clothing in England. And there are some very interesting um, comments and paragraphs about corsets and crinolines. So it, it, she's quite outspoken on these matters about the female body, about female conduct, about romance, which is really way ahead of her time. What I found very significant <clears throat> is a passage that she writes on Satitva. And I'm going to read that. What does she understand by the word Satitava? And I'm quoting, according to me, the Satis in this century 
sorry, the satis in this country are the real ones. She's calling the British women the real satis because it is easier to boast of satitva in a domain that excludes men. But those who interact with men, treating them as equals, hold conversation and go around with them, yet do not compromise their precious dharma. They are the ones who deserve proper praise. And they are the ones who possess a greater strength of mind and dharma. This comes towards the end of the book, page 153. Now, <clears throat> I'll end with a word and a query, really, about the nationalist discourse. The only place where I found it was uh, in the last chapter, where she talks about the daughters of Hindu women and the glory of ancient civilization. But her tone is not belligerent. In fact, it's a rather persuasive kind of a tone where she asks the readers, particularly the women, to awaken to the possibilities, and I'm quoting, of freedom, change, and development. <clears throat> now, one can't challenge that kind of uh, expectation. She criticizes the lower class uh, in Britain. She talks about the materialism of Britain, the obsession with money, the self-centeredness, the self-interest. But was that really enough for banning a book? I don't know. So uh, I loved the book, enjoyed reading it, and I think Navunita has opened up a whole area of possible further research because it is important to know where did she have this sensitivity towards the British when she came as an outsider but looked at them like an insider? Why, despite being a wife and a mother, she never talks about the private side of her life? What was she holding back? And how did this manuscript get lost in the long journey between his publication and Nobunita picking it up for turning it into English? Thank you very much. Wonderful, Marishwadi. Thank you so much for an in-depth analysis. And really, uh, it's contributed a lot to the discussion. And uh, many people will be taking up your subjects that you have looked into. Thank you so much, Marishwadi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we move on to uh, our another mentor and uh, our teacher, Professor Shangyukta Dasgupta. Uh, and uh, Shangyukta needs no introduction, and uh, the whole evening uh, will be over if I go on talking about her. Uh, she is the convener of uh, English Board, English Advisory Board, Shahid Academy, New Delhi, and President uh, Executive Committee, IPPL. Uh, visiting Professor uh, Agalonian University, Krakow, Poland, and uh, and uh, so the author of so many books, and uh, she is the inspiration for many of us, many of us and counting. And uh, one of her very important books in 2020 is Media, Gender, Popular Culture in India, Tracking Change and Continuity uh, 2020. Over to Sangjukta, please. Thank you, Jaydeep, for that very generous introduction. And by now I know how generous you can be. And of course, it's a great joy to be here today. Uh, especially thank you, Kolkata Translators Forum. And congratulations, Nobunita, for uh, launching this book today. And also for asking me to comment on uh, your book, and I know how how exacting it is to be able to bring out a book to be launched on a particular evening, which looks so glamorous and glorious in every way, but the hard work of many years is the result of this evening. And so I am very, uh, of course, after Malishri Lal, I think there is no point even trying to make any more comments because I think she's has touched on everything. But what I probably want to uh, talk about would be, first of all, uh, the text itself, which was found in the National Library, absolutely in a brittle state. And the first version is a Bengali version. It's by Shimonti Shin. And if I've got the name right, yes, Shimonti Shen, published by Stree. 
And that was probably a beginning for people's interest in the book. And the brilliant introduction to Srimanti Sen's uh, book, I think at one time or the other should also be translated because it is, I, uh, I would have uh, requested Nabonita if we had spoken about the book prior to its publication, that that too probably could have been included, that brilliant introduction. As Nabonita will recall, we have included Ram Kumar Mukhopadhyay's a uh, Bengali introduction to a book that we are working on right now. The second uh, uh, comment that I have to make is the book, uh, this book was translated into English by Shomdatta Mondal, who will probably talk about her own translation, and then Nabunita. And we have learned by heart a phrase which really protects us all, that translation is not definitive. Yes? And if it is not definitive and so indefinite and so unreliable, then each time what we are looking at is a transcreation. Because it is the moment there a translator immerses herself into a source text to carry it over into a target text, what happens is that the translator is transcreating. And the, trans, uh, and the translator is transcreating, and therefore it becomes the translator's text. It is not only Krishna Bhavadi's text. And there I feel that Nabunita has been able to do absolute justice to the mm, mm, to Krishna Bhavadi's text in terms of translating it into English, because as um, Alishrilal pointed out, that it reads seamlessly. It, uh, it's a very, very easy reading of the English language without any sort of those ethnic hurdles sometimes placed by various translators to authenticate the fact that this, these are, uh, this is a very, very um, ethnic text. But she has not used those terms at all. And also very uh, interestingly, the comparison with Hippolyte uh, Ten and her and Krishna Bhavini's book is also very interesting because she has uh, brought those to, to, uh, to uh, those uh, comparisons together and showed us the various similarities. It seems, but then should we call it plagiarism into a different language? Because after all, that was written in French, translated into English. Uh, Ten's book. And then again, uh, read by uh, Krishna Bhavini, and then in Bangla, we find another, another version. But as I said before, each translation is also a transcreation. So we are not looking at tr linguistic translation, we are looking at sense translation. And the sense and sensibility of a translation is the intimate union of the translator with the source text so that what comes out is really the translator's text. And there Krishna Mahabini, even if she has translated or replicated uh, some of Tain's, many of Tain's ideas and records and documentation in his book, but then we wouldn't call it plagiarism. We wouldn't call it a blind replication, but probably as uh, teachers who have dabbled with uh, various uh, words which are a little jargon ridden probably, but then we like it also too much. A word like intertextuality. Yes. So I find it fascinating really uh, the prevalence of uh, this sort of uh, introduction that Nabodita has introduced. It's a brilliant introduction again with Shimonti's introduction and Nabodita's introduction. I'm sure in the next version, Kririti and Vitan must be hearing this with great uh, interest that uh, I'm even proposing another version, another second edition to the book. But also along with this, what I uh, found, what everybody has pointed out that she has been very bold in her expression of what she, um, of what she felt about the British and many of us have called it a travelogue. I personally wouldn't call it a travelogue as such because after all, it was not about voluntary travel. 
it was a woman accompanying her husband to a place of work for eight years. And then she records, like in a diary, a very, very impersonal, abstract generalization. So it's more like an impressionistic argumentative essay of a very intelligent woman who is able to make these comparisons between the British regime in India and uh, the British society in, in the mainland, that is England. And coming to, I will not uh, continue for this for too long. I'm just uh, trying to think of various things that had just occurred to me as I uh, read the book. I was also looking at the translation. I don't know whether this is the available translation from the 19th century uh, uh, when the book was first published in 1885 in Bangla. So whether the, a Bengali version of the translation, uh, an English version had appeared at that time, a Bengali lady, in England. So England, a bongo mohila. So, you know, with all the discourse in colonial studies about the bhadra mohila, uh, I was wondering, instead of lady, if we had introduced England, a bangali bhadra mohila, how would it have sounded? <coughs> I'm just trying to uh, share my uh, various uh, perceptions about this particular book. And al already I think to be, I uh, think I'm almost choking with emotion or choking with some sort of something which happens with age, I'm not too sure. So, and uh, finally, what I also want to point out and which Malishri Lal also pointed out is that whether this is a feminist text. To me, it is not a feminist text as such because she has made many of those compromises in her writing in terms of what we even find in Shana Kumari Devi, what we find in her own writing. She again makes those generalizations. And these generalizations are a sort of a celebration of how free the British women are and how uh, much, uh, what a claustrophobic existence the Indian women or Asian women lead. But what really distinguishes the text with which I want to end is the criticism of the British, though I'm not too sure from the available evidence whether this uh, can be found in the ba banned literature list, uh, a point that uh, Malashilal was making because I haven't seen it yet. Uh, probably I've missed seeing that. But I want, want to end with uh, two uh, very short sections that I want to read. One is the first publisher's response to this book when he was first publishing and see the sort of psychophancy and flattery towards the British that the first publisher, that is the Bengali publisher, you uh, probably the, uh, what we find in Shimonti's book that the first publication uh, title page is also included, which is also very interesting. But there he says, years of colonization have turned our bones into dust. To sow the seeds of life here once again, the seeds must be brought from the land of spectacular achievements of a zealous race. And there is no doubt that England is that very place. India will need to obtain her ambrosial seeds from England only, especially with the kind of strong ties that has been destined to form between the two countries. What could be more uh, about a psychophant publisher? Because he's scared. Because the content of the manuscript has a lot of strong criticism about the British society and also the British people in terms of their um, a, a tremendous uh, sort of avaricious greed. I'll read the passage. And here I'm reminded of Shashi Tharoor and the Era of Darkness, which was awarded the uh, Shaito Academy Prize uh, last year. And here is what Krishna Vabini almost 
sort of Shashi Tharoor, I'm not too sure whether he read this book, he would have been delighted and probably quoted this. And here is it. Money is the supreme God of England. Anybody spending a few days in England will get the hint of how much these Englishmen crave for money and how they pursue it. They earn money both in their own country and abroad, just as vultures hover around a place where they can smell meat. British rush to any place that has a slightest chance of earning money. Probably there is no such country they are not sucking money from. Yes, so this is absolutely an explosive uh, statement made by a woman uh, in, the, in 1885, written in Bangla, which protects her a lot, yes? If it was written in English, probably being, uh, getting banned would have been uh, very, very easy. But when you were you write in Bangla, at that time, as you know, all the, journal, uh, the journalists, all the well-known newspapers which were ret written in Bangla, till somebody really translated it and brought it to the attention of the British administration, they uh, were a little innocent because they were not interested in the culture. They were only interested in the money to loot the country. The one word which defines the entire British, um, British regime for more than 250 years is loot. And as you know, the British Museum is an evidence of that loot. Yes, not only of India, but every country in the world. I remember I went with some historians to the British Museum and in a great reverential mood, I was looking at everything and they said, so, so, you know, that is what I uh, noticed in this text, which was really one which I felt um, is uh, what did not scare her. And what probably scared her is not the macro politics, but the micro politics of the home, which is absolutely absent in her text. Nothing about her husband, nothing about the daughter. She had left behind in order to reach England and see for herself how in mainland, in the mainland, the British society uh, performed. And therefore, I am very, very happy that Nobunita chose to bring this book uh, into focus, into the forefront. And I am hoping that students and researchers will take this uh, research of Nobunita even further. Thank you so much. Wonderful. You gave us so many dimensions to look at the text. Thank you so much. It's only you can make it. Thank you so much. Uh, next, we move on to a very important person about the book, uh, Professor Shom Dr. Mondal, and uh, who also needs no introduction. In 2020, our mammoth book, Kobe and Rani, uh, memoirs and correspondences, uh, correspondences uh, that 2020, and also we are all eagerly waiting for the book that we uh, that I had discussions about with about which uh, which Shomdatta the the last days of Rabindranath Tagore in memoirs 2021 it is due we are all looking for, eagerly waiting for the book and uh, the and also Shomdatta the published the translation a Bengali lady in England. Um, but the same book, which is now translated in 2020 by Nagonita, over to Shundatta, please. Thank you. Thank you, Joydeep. Am I audible? Uh, audible. audible. Yes, okay. No, I'm very scared about high-tech gadget things because sometimes it's mute and sometimes not. I don't know what happens. Anyhow, so good evening, everybody. Uh, I am here as the third speaker, and though I have nothing new to add about it, it might sound a little bit of talking about myself, but many of you probably were not even aware that I have translated this same book, Bengali Lady in England. It was published in 2015, five years back. And because Cambridge scholars, the publisher had 
put the price of the book for 45 pounds, well, no one bought it. And it has been included in several university syllabi with me surreptitiously supplying photocopies of the text to the organizers. So this, I wrote to them and that this book has immense possibilities, especially in India, people should read it. Can you please give us permission to at least publish an Indian version, like many books which have cheaper Indian versions? They said no, and they were very delighted. And what they proposed was to bring out a paperback cheap edition, which came out incidentally in the last week of February, first week of March, just when the pandemic began. And so this book is also now not seeing the light of day anywhere. Anyhow, I'll just show you, if you can see, this is the colorful cover of the paperback edition, which Cambridge scholars brought out. And as Shangjukta has already mentioned, translation and transcreation. If Bonolata Shen can still be translated after 18 odd translations and people feel that still it's not perfect. So a second book coming out from such a young scholar translating, I'm very happy with Navonita doing this job and that her book will reach, you know, scholars much more easily than what I did. Now, I have just two things to add about her translation. As you know, each translation, it is also the translator's own interpretation. I'm not comparing with her. It reads fine. But, um, and she's done a wonderful job of comparing, which Hong Jukta clearly mentioned, saying that you cannot call it direct plagiarism, but with Hippolyte Taines, with all the sections. But I don't know whether you're all aware that her husband, Devendranath Dash, who went on bringing several books to her. This Tain's book was just one book for her to read and write and extract. So it is not that she had seen everything with her own eyes. Some books she went on consulting and Devendranath Dash, with his own oriental agenda, at that point of time was writing sketches of Hindu life, talking about Indian life in India, when her wife, when his wife was doing, this is a very interesting thing to be keeping in mind and anyone who wants to do research on this has this. The second point I want to make is, uh, I have been uh, working with travel narrative for a long, long time and on women's travel writing, colonial period, and I, the first time I came across Krishna Bhamini was, I think, way back in 2002 or three. I don't remember, with Joyati Gupta, another professor who has done a lot of work and recently Rutledge has brought out her book on Bengali travel writing last a couple of months back. Joyati Di translated a section, a chapter of this book, as far as I remember that dreary portion of London life, which I think was chapter six in an online journal. And that was the first time I read it and then went back to this. I said, if this is so interesting about a bleak, about a lady writing about the underbelly of London, let's go and read the whole book. The second point which I want to make is, uh, which this continuously us and them, this also undergoes a change because she's there for eight long years when she's writing the book. And as rightly mentioned, it is not a mere travelogue. It is done to educate, you know, throughout the text you find, for my sisters who are chained at home, who does not know what life is like that, etc., etc. So the one point I want to mention is how you know, when we are talking about travel narratives, something what, you know, the ethnographic person who is writing also changes with time. So this is something I think is also important in the case of Krishna Bhakti. Like the lady who went with her husband and staying there, giving the feedback with books and all to write about with this mission of 
writing to people back home so this gave her an added advantage but at the same time this us versus them formula which you find in every almost every woman's travel log <coughs> excuse me <coughs> also undergoes a change so i am very happy that navonita has brought out a new edition my only uh, you might say a little bit of complaint is though it is about she said about her dissertation being phd dissertation that long acknowledgement in the beginning of a book for a layman reader would i think uh, it would have been better if she reduced it and just said that this was an earlier version of you know of my phd work instead of going and thanking which every phd scholar does at the beginning this library and that library and etc that could have been avoided otherwise i'm very much impressed and also with the publishers who have done a good job and before ending i just want to read out not from the text per se but from two little two little a few sentences from michael fisher you know the um, the professor us professor who's done voluminous work on travel narratives travel between england and uh, us and india so professor michael fisher very generously wrote the foreword to my book but it's not for that he pointed out something which none of us which i found should be uh, uh, you know aware of and this is what he says which earlier i didn't realize only after he wrote this foreword we came and thought in that way i am quoting from professor fisher he says in her account krishna bhamini repeatedly raises two central dilemmas first how she can she and her compatriots preserve their own culture and values while simultaneously becoming anglicized as an example of this danger she criticized her contemporary pandita ramabai for having abandoned hinduism to become a christian and hence degraded the hindu race initially krishna bhamini laments with shame how through her own adoption of the mem sahib english woman's dress she had distanced herself from her hindu bengali sisters but she takes heart from her conviction that she has done so for their sake krishna bhamini's second dilemma is who should be included in her vision for the nascent indian nation as she first leaves bengal and journeys by train to mumbai she notes both the stereotypical differences and also the foundational commonalities among middle class hindu women and men of india's diverse regions but she does not identify with people of lower classes or other communities living in india thus her evocative account tells us much about her own personal perceptions and cultural journeys and those of many comparable people of her time and status through krishna bhamini's thoughtful ethnography we also learn much about english victorian society and culture now i wanted to just read out because this is a third person point of view objective point of view of the of a text an englishman's version of what he thought was significant in the text and i thought that uh, this talking about you know her own way of not identifying herself with all the indian so that was something like she as a bengali woman was different from the others has also added to the complications of this us versus them regime so what she says what she writes i think is not an entire person's world view but from a bengali perspective per se 
so these with these words i think i i i've distracted you from the book launch but once again i congratulate novonita for redoing this book and i hope many others will be in, even inspired later and uh, to work on this book but once again it is not unlike the other travel logs which i have translated it is not a simple travel per se and what another point i want to mention is when i i also did not know actually whether this book was banned or not this is the first time i am hearing about it i didn't know whether the british banned this book or not but one thing was sure in the preface from which hongjukta already read out shorbadikari uh, the person who published the first publisher of book it was anonymous and the first sentence is if you say uni ekhon lekhika ekhon shamir shonge bideshe achen ei tukuni porichiti no name it is only with shimonti sen's book 1996 when shimonti the version that three brought out it was called uh, krishna bhamini dasher england e bongo mohila so basically you know it was much later that uh, her name like england e bongo mohila was anonymous like of course late 19th century writing anonymous books we get plenty of references of women writing anonymously or with pseudonym but in this case this was something which i found very interesting but i frankly did not come across this news about whether this book was banned like koilas chandra dutt's book a journal of 48 hours whether it was really banned by the britishers during that time with these words thank you very much inviting me to share a few thoughts uh, about this book and once again Good evening to all of you. Thank you, Shomdatta Di. Thank you so much for bringing so many materials into this perspectives, and you translated five years ago. So it's a new journey and translation, as Shomdatta Di pointed out. That is, no translation is definite. That is, all fuzzy possibilities remain for another version of translation. Thank you, thank you, Malishrudi. And Shangjukta Di and Shomdatta Di for making the evening a very special one. It was pure, pure learning. Over to the coordinators. Over to Joya. Thank you, thank you, Joydeep. Really, it's 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 true. It's really a, a, a pure learning for me this evening. Thank you, uh, Malishrudi, Shomdatta Di, and Shangjukta Di, uh, and each and every speaker uh, told. from very very different aspects uh, and from shomdatta ji's uh, last uh, comments i was thinking about a writer i mean krishna bhavini dashi was discovered as krishna bhavini much years later while i i i learned from shomdatta ji i it reminds me uh, lasario de tormes de spain it was written uh, around 1525 6 uh because don quixote was written already in 155 and 1515 two volumes uh, that time also lasario de tormes one of the most special uh, pre, uh pioneer literature of uh, spanish golden era uh that was also written by anonymous this anonymous similarity actually uh, uh, search in my mind that that book also i have translated in bangla that book also uh, showed all the deformity of that society uh, of that area of spanish the peak uh, uh, era of spanish colonization uh, so i think uh, maybe to avoid the rulers a uh, negative approach uh, to the writers maybe these two persons of these two different eras choose to be to remain anonymous but to express the real uh, look about the picture of the uh, of the um, colonial powers and 
uh, while listening all these discussions actually i was thinking this book is really not only for the research people and who are seriously thinking about the women literature the history and everything it's not only that i think for for a pure reader who reads out of uh, read to enjoy a book i don't call it i also don't think it is a tr perfect type of travel book but i think to me also i discovered after 100 years of uh, this writing i was also uh, was discovering england through the eyes of uh, krishna bhavani dashi so i think this book has every uh, possibility uh, to become popular also i don't think uh, the popular literatures of chetan bhagat and anish tripathi but i think it has every opportunity uh, to be popular among young readers also i think so uh, thank you all our guests and obviously thank you joydeep who conducted a fantastic uh, pro part of to, uh, this evening's program uh, now at the very fag end of today's program i request publishers of shambhavi hawa call uh, mr kiriti shen gupto and bitan chakravarti if they could they can share with us Uh, their experience, their uh, way of looking, why they choose to publish this type of book, etc. If they want to say something uh, for this book, Kiriti, please. Your microphone is mute. Yeah, my audible now. Yeah. Yes. Very much. yeah joydeep thank you so much uh why did we choose this book uh, for publication that was your question yeah shambhavi and hawakal uh like at shambhavi and hawakal we are proud to be associated with all the firsts you know uh, back in 2014 we published the first fictional narrative uh written in the year 1835 and it was edited by shomdatta di this is a book it was a first back in 2018 we published the first drama written in english by an indian it was the persecuted and edited by parumita shengupto so that's another first and now this year we have published nobunita shengupto's translation of England de Bongo Mohila. This is uh, the first travel log, or you know, the first travel narrative written in the year eighteen eighty five by a Bengali lady. So this is another first. So at our house, we are immensely proud to be associated with all the firsts, Joyadi. So it's a matter of pride. It's of it. It's a matter of happiness and utter joy that. Whenever or whenever anybody wants to pick up the book, they uh, they will have to buy from us. Fantastic, fantastic. Do you want to say some some more about the book, or we proceed? Like uh, we have listened to the luminaries, I, and I I think I like there is nothing to add to 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 their uh, uh, to their uh, speeches. so we are done okay thank you and of course we take uh, joyadi we take this opportunity to thank all the luminaries present in this show and congratulate nobunita for her uh, you know immense effort in bringing out this book okay thank you i will of course nobunita will enjoy your uh, sentences and this book i must say it's a very well put well designed and of course the cover is very uh, interesting and i always appreciate this paper book thing because uh, this is easier to travel i mean we can you can take anywhere uh, this paper book idea is always uh, i love it okay yeah, it's called paperback a paperback uh, yes uh, all this paperback paperback version i always appreciate that but in bengal 
mostly people think that if you put heavy uh, literally heavy a book then it, it it increases its value but yeah, you know, i i i i second your thought joyadi because that's a very popular notion among the bengali poets yeah yeah um, well i worked with the um, embassies um first time i worked with uh, paraguayan embassy they make an our publisher forced them to publish those books in hard bound but later on when i did the gabriela mistral project with the chilean embassy then they uh, told me no no nowadays in uh, uh, our countries we don't uh, uh, want to publish uh, that uh, hard hard cover hard back uh, issues we always choose yeah, yeah 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 i understand your point and if i'm not very wrong overseas hard covers are considered history <laughs> that uh, i agree with you okay thank you all uh, i am uh, we are at the end of today's program i think we have a fantastic successful book launch program so to end uh, this uh, today's program i request our president uh, mr rawal push j uh, kolkata translator president kolkata translators forum creative writer and translator to deliver vote of thanks to the guests rahul ji yes i as a president of kolkata translators forum feel proud that we could organize such a webinar i thank all our respected guest speakers like malashri lal sanjukta das gupta somdatta mandal and also our moderator jaydeep sarangi and especially publishers shambhavi hawakal i know personally uh, kritishan gupta in uh, some of their publications especially poetry books of kritishan gupta i was present in two or three uh, their programs and today's it was a nice uh, program nice discussion on this uh, book this travel of i personally very much interested in travelog because my one of travelog was very popular on bangladesh meri bangladesh yatra and i uh, from my side i congratulate navanita sen gupta who has done a wonderful job and all our guest speakers from there i could know that the british government also banned or does not ban i don't know Uh, this uh, travel log because it might be banned because some of uh, guest speaker told that uh, britishers were money uh, seekers or money successors or where they go where there is money whatever it is it was a nice program i thank again to everyone who were associated with this program and also our viewers our listeners and our own uh shamal bhattacharya our uh, anchor jay choudhury and all other our trishna and all our moderator anchor jay choudhury also thank you everybody thank you all this much of today's evening hope we meet again we will do more many more things in future all together with ippl and all these dignitaries and all Okay thank you thank you for the evening